from Seneca Falls From Selma to Stonewall We've come a long way We've come a long way From Seneca From Seneca Falls From Selma to Stonewall We've come a long way We've come a long way From Seneca Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this um, Monday. Today is Monday, January 15th. Today is also the day when we honor the life and the ministry and the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so I'm so glad you started your day off with me and all of us today. Uh, that was The Journey Isn't Over. Um, featuring Lydia Munoz, and that was Mark Miller and the New Haven Collective off of Imagine the People of God. So uh, just a great, great song, a good song to start today as well. So I'm glad you're with us this morning. Today we're going to be looking, um, uh, I'm going to be doing, uh, sharing with you a prayer uh, from the early uh, years when um, when Martin Luther King, when King was 24, um, and our passage this morning comes from Matthew, um, beginning in Matthew 5, uh, the 
the Sermon on the Mount beginning in, in verse 38. But let me say good morning to all of you. It's good to be with you. Um, I hope you're staying warm, uh, keeping in prayer uh, our our friends that, that aren't um, able to have housing and so praying that they're finding some place to stay warm in the midst of this cold, cold day. But um, glad you're with us. Let's uh, good morning, Debbie. Glad you're with us today. And Donna, welcome. Praying for both of you this morning. And Daniel, we got three Ds in a row. Daniel and Janet, it's good to have both of you here holding you in prayer this morning. Good morning, Barbara and Priscilla. I'm glad you're with us. Praying for you today. And Ernestine and Blanca, I'm glad you're both here praying for you. Good morning, Andrea and Michelle. I'm glad you're both here praying for you. <clears throat> Good morning, Deb. Yes, we've come a long way, but... <laughs> um, and Lawrence, good to have you here praying for you both this morning. Good morning, Ingrid and Susan. Good to be with both of you today praying for you and Celia and Augusta. I'm glad you're both here. It was so good to see you yesterday, Augusta. Praying for both of you and Remy and Lisa. I'm glad you're with us as well. Praying for you um, both. Praying for all of you as we begin this day. So um, I encourage you to open up your Bibles. We're going to be looking at Matthew uh, chapter 5, beginning in verse 38. And I will read to verse... 42, 38 to 42. So as you're turning in your Bibles, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And it is always good to start the day off with all of you as we root ourselves in God's word, as we lift one another up in prayer. This is really important um, work to do together. It's good for us to be able to come together. And so I'm glad you're here praying for each one of you as we begin the day. So let's take a look at Matthew 5, beginning in verse 38. You have heard it, you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer, but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Uh, good morning, Genevieve. I'm glad you're with us today. So our devotion, um, I actually took it off of uh, the Fuller Dupree Center. It's on the, I, it's on the internet. So, um, but this is a, a devotion entitled A Prayer of Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So, so today is the third Monday in January. Is it? Why do I feel like it's... Well, I'll look at that later. <laughs> this means it's, it's uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day in the United States, a national holiday on which we remember the exceptional life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Junior. Today is actually Dr. King's birthday. He was born January 15th, 1929. We remember, we, rem we remember Dr. King most of all for his transformational work related to racial justice in the United States, but often we are not aware of Dr. King's depth as a theologian, a pastor, and a person of mature Christian faith. We can see strong evidence of these qualities in a prayer written by Martin Luther King be, before he earned his doctorate, a PhD in theology from Boston University in 1955. In the summer of his years in graduate school, 
Martin would often help his, help his father, who was the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Among his tasks was writing prayers for the radio broadcasts of the worship services. Several of these handwritten prayers are preserved among Dr. King's papers at Stanford University, and one is published in Thou, Dear God, Prayers That Open Hearts and Spirits by Martin Luther King Jr. A couple of things about this prayer strikes me. First, it was written by King when he was only 24 years old. Such profound and articulate faith for a young man. Second, it is needed and appropriate today. It is as needed and appropriate today as it was 70 years ago when King wrote it. So with no further ado, here is the prayer of Dr. King. Thou eternal God, out of whose absolute power and infinite intelligence, intelligence, the whole universe has come into being. We humbly confess that we have not loved thee with our hearts, souls, and minds. And we have not loved our neighbors as Christ loved us. We have all too often lived by our own selfish impulses rather than by the life of sacrificial love as revealed by Christ. We often give in order to receive. We love our friends and hate our enemies. We go the first mile, but dare not travel the second. We forgive, but dare not forget. And so as we look within ourselves, we are confronted with the appalling fact that the history of our lives is the history of an eternal revolt against you. But thou, O oh God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us for what we could have been but failed to be. Give us the intelligence to know your will. Give us the courage to do your will. Give us the devotion to love your will. In the name and the spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm aware on days like this, I'm aware most days, <laughs> just how far we are from the walk that King is calling us to in this prayer and that Christ is calling us to in the scripture that I read earlier from Matthew. Following Jesus is not an easy walk. I know people think if I can just get that right, then everything will be easy. Following Jesus is not uh, the easy path. The burden will be light, <laughs> but it, it requires us to do what is over and against what the world says. And that is hard, to love our enemies, to go the extra mile when we're tired. And we've already done so much that day to love and care for the lost and the least in our world, to speak out when there are those that are being oppressed, to speak and work for justice for all of God's children. This requires an, an added, added step on our part. And sometimes it's much more than a step. Sometimes it's a mile. And so today, as we remember the life, and it was not a long life. He did a lot, but it was not a long life. It was cut short because he was challenging the structures of the world. 
and Christ was doing the same. In order to live fully in the kingdom, we need to be about the work of challenging unjust structures, of going uh, and feeding those uh, that are often forgotten in our world, of caring for the lost and the least, the ones on the margins, the ones who have no power to give us, the ones who cannot give back to us. This is what God is calling us to, uh, not just on Dr. Martin Luther King Day, but on every day. And so today, as we remember the life of King, I encourage you to find some way that you can serve. But if you can't do it today, do it tomorrow, because the need tomorrow is still there. Now, I, I say this um, all the time, you know, people will say, oh, I want to serve on Thanksgiving. Great, serve on Thanksgiving. But you know what? We're going to serve tomorrow night and the night after that and the night after that. The need in our world is always there. The need for breaking the, the chains of injustice in our world is always there. Every day is an opportunity to be about the work that we see in Matthew 5, that we hear in this prayer. So today, as we remember the life of King, I want to encourage you, maybe you look up some of his prayers or read some of his sermons. I shared part of a sermon yesterday. Um, find, find some ways that you can reconnect in with that message. And then if today is a day that you serve, wonderful. But find some opportunity to be about the work that we hear both in this prayer of King as well as through the words of Christ in our Bible. As we move into this time of prayer, I give thanks for how far we've come and I lament that the journey isn't over. There's still so much work to be done, work within ourselves, work within our families, work within our communities and our country and our world. So how, my friends, will you be a part of it? Let us pray. God, we come this day grateful for the gift of life, grateful for the work that has been done before us, for our ancestors, for those who have walked a very difficult journey to bring about justice for so many. Lord, we thank you for the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We thank you for his ministry. We thank you for the many that have gone, uh, that were before him and those that continue on the work of justice. But the journey isn't over. And so today you call each one of us. You ask the question, how, how are you living out your faith? How are you loving yourself and your neighbor as God loves you? And we hear this question, Lord, and we realize that too often we have failed to love. We have failed to love ourselves. We have failed to love our neighbor. We have failed to love our enemies. Because it seems too hard. So pour into us a new spirit, a new courage, a new willingness to be about the work, to be about your work in the world so that all God's children will come to know the fullness of life that we are offered so that no one goes hungry, no one is cold and alone and feels forgotten. 
Lord, we see so much brokenness in our world, wars continuing to rage all around the world, especially in the land that we call holy. We see gun violence on our streets and in our schools, and we wonder how long, how long, Lord, as if somehow asking the question will bring some miracle answer and you remind us that you've called us to this work. And so lead us today that we might serve, that we might speak out, speak up, that we might love not just our friends and the ones that love us, but love those that are hardest to love and that we might come to know how deeply you love us, how deeply you love this world that you've created. Lead us today in the footsteps of Dr. King. Lead us that we might be about your kingdom work. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today, open up, read some of King's works, his prayers, his sermons, get out there and serve. If you're looking for a place to serve uh, in the community, reach out to me. I can, I can give you some opportunities um, and know this, um, that the God who loves you will walk with you uh, even, to the mo even into the most challenging of situations. Um, we just need to be willing to step. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.